Putting on my top hat, tying up my white tie, brushing up my tail. Welcome to Hatcast, the podcast about hats. I'm Charles Berman. And I'm Carl Bernhardson. And we're here to talk about hats. And we have an excellent hat to discuss today. One of the most platonically symbolic hats, I think. If you think hats, you think this hat. In uh, fact, if you were going to make an emblem for a program about hats, you might even think of using this hat to represent to represent hats as a concept in general. Right, and you may, if you were picking a theme song for that program, pick a song that mentions this type of hat. But all kidding aside, ladies and gentlemen, let's let's drop the facade. Let's call a spade a spade. You know we're talking about the top hat, and we're not talking hypothetically. We're talking about ourselves and what we've done with Hatcast, which is symbolized by an image of a top hat with the word Hatcast written on it. <laughs> and which began with the song you just heard, Top Hat, White Tie, and Tails by Irving Berlin, performed by Ray Noble and his orchestra. And the people who selected all of these items to go together have... Were us. Yeah, and now we're going to talk to you about Top Hats. That's right. <laughs> and this has been a long time coming, right? Oh, yes. We've wanted to talk about it for a while, and we just thought... We hadn't done it yet. Yeah, but low-hanging fruit tastes just as good. Oh, yeah. So... And we began we began with the bowler, which is similarly emblematic hat, in my view. Yeah. And we had that letter a while back saying, why hadn't we done the fedora, which we still haven't done. Right, we'll get to it. But we thought, why don't we do another famous hat? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or famous type of hat. Yeah. And this is a return to form. We've been yes. saying for weeks we're going to return to form because we were experimenting a little bit. We talked about books and we talked about hats as a gift. I don't think we need to cease to experiment. I think, for instance... Oh, no, we're not done. We're just... This is our top hat episode, but I think, for instance, we should do an episode wherein we talk about the, fil we, the film Top Hat. I think we should watch it and do a program about it. Oh, I think people would like that. I think yeah. we would at least like making right. that. Right, I think so. And that's the point. Um, so let's do it. Yeah. But before we begin talking about the Top Hat, which we've already begun to do, but before we proceed to resume talking about the Top Hat... We have some correspondence. We do. We, we uh, have one from our friend Jacob. Who likes the program. He does. He's also someone we see regularly. Yes. We saw him the other day and he said to us, I've been told I misused the phrase the other day. I use it to mean a recent day. How else would you use it? I've been told it means the day before yesterday. Oh, that's too specific. No, when I say yes. the other day, I mean sometime in the last month or two. So do I. Yeah. All right. Well, we're agreed. Yeah. We saw him on Monday, to be specific. <laughs> And he talked to us, and then we, we did invite him to be a guest. Yes, I don't know if he's going to... He doesn't seem to wear hats, so it might make him less uh, enthusiastic about that. Yeah, but he reads a lot of classic literature and nonfiction history. He does. So I'm sure he's encountered the concept of hats. Of hats. I, yeah. I don't think I ever suspected he didn't know what hats were. He, has, he even has a head, so he's equipped to wear one of them. But No, I, I don't think he would listen to this program as, as a sort of... In the function of a clue uh, to help him maybe someday discover what this word hat refers to. <laughs> anyway, he decided to write to us after talking yes, to us. Yes, he did. And while he spoke to us, he said, he spoke very kindly, and uh, he said he he liked that the program did not require him to think very much. <laughs> which I, don't, I, I think I think we should take as a compliment. We do the thinking for you. That's right. But he wrote to us regarding academic caps... This is a reference to our previous program about academic caps. In my childhood, I associated them with The Genius, a comedy heel wrestler from about 1989 to 1991 or so. I have attached the match that is probably his greatest accomplishment, a cowardly count-out victory over no less than Hulk Hogan himself. So apparently there was a professional wrestler. Yes. Uh, the entertainment kind of wrestler, not the Olympian. Right. Um, who... Would wear a academic cap. That's right. And just talk about how smart he was in rhyming. Right. And apparently he he was called the genius, and I they would have him write scrolls while he was preparing to wrestle, because that is what a genius would do. A genius would not 
come to the conclusion I'm about to be in a wrestling match, maybe I should do, prepare for it. <laughs> that, that would be too intelligent a conclusion to come to. Oh, no, that, I mean, I, I was I was genuinely amused to find out about this. So was I, but it, it just tells goes to show what a symbol of intelligence without words that academic cap is. Right. It's just a shorthand. He's smart, so of course he wears a mortarboard. Yes. I don't think anyone really smart would decide to wear that for no reason. Unless you... I, no, I, I'm not... Right. I'm but not it, saying it, it goes to the guy, argument that we have that it's it's a it's a very good shorthand for educated. For intelli- yeah, yeah, for ed- education and intelligence. Apparently his real name is Lanny Poffo. A good name. Yes. Uh, and... He's a Canadian American professional wrestler, motivational speaker, poet, and actor. And I have no reason to believe in the real life he's not highly intelligent. He probably is. I think he was playing a character when he was the genius and, and wearing this hat. I think you're right. Yeah. But thank you for that correspondence, Jacob. And we, look, we will be happy to have you on the program. And we look forward at least to hearing more from you over email. Yes, indeed. But definitely join us. All right. Well, now on to the main attraction. The top hat. The top hat. What do you think of when you think of top hats? Oh, I think of a lot of things, Charles. The top hat evokes it's so many with yeah. associations. I mean, you think obviously early twentieth century, late nineteenth uh-huh. century, most specifically. Um, you think rich people, right? You think going to formal events. You think the Monopoly Man. Oh yeah, the, yeah. yeah. The, is Rich Uncle Moneybags is yeah. that his name? Yeah, and he wears he wears one. It is associated with wealth. Yes, but also magicians. Yes, who are not. That's not necessarily famously <laughs> a lucrative profession. I would think if you were really magic, you should be rich. If you were a very successful right. magician, well, w- if you were really magic, you should be rich. Yes, and that's the thing. If you want me to believe as a magician, to suspend my disbelief and say you do have magical powers. You better present yourself as extremely wealthy and doing this for your own entertainment. Right. You're yeah. entertaining me because you're bored, not because you're trying to make some money, because you could just make money with magic. Now, that said, my father used to be a magician. Really? Yeah, and his his stage name... <laughs> well, that wasn't a joke. It's just true. Go on. <laughs> Carl's collapsed at laughing at this fact. No, it's, I, it, I'm, I'm laughing at how unsurprised I am. Oh, um, I see. So your father, the Which magician. Is, yes, and his stage name was the Great El Phony. It sounds a lot like the Great the Phony in yeah. Spanish. <laughs> I, I, El Phony, it, it does, that doesn't actually mean that in Spanish, but it, it, it's a humorous name indicating that... Uh, Everyone knows the tricks are not real. It is for the sake of entertainment. I don't know if he wore a top hat when he did it. Have you ever owned a top hat? You know, as an adult, I have not owned a real top hat. As a child, I owned a like a poor quality felt top hat that I would wear around. Um, but I've never owned like a real like silk or uh-huh. beaver top hat. Right. Um, Which would be the two main things yeah you know. i assume now you're far less likely to get one made out of beaver and more likely to get one made out of silk wool felt or, or silk, wool felt, yeah. yeah but yeah that was i i loved that i loved wearing my top hat i i mean i thought a lot about ebenezer scrooge and charles dickens characters yeah that's that's what i would when i was a kid i would they wear that and i would warn pre- those right. yes I, I pretended to be mostly charles dickens characters although we shouldn't say ebenezer scrooge and charles dickens <laughs> characters <laughs> Uh, for, and other right. co- fellow Dickens characters. Yes, uh, I've been reading. I um, I've been reading the the old. I've already read the old Curiosity Shop last year. I've been reading the Pickwick Papers, and there are many references to hats. Well, Dickens yeah. has been a rich resource for oh, us. He has. Yeah. I mean, we want to find the first person to write about a very specific hat. It's possibly Dickens. Well, he li- he likes describing people's hats almost stage business with their hats. He There is some descriptions of gags with top hats in the Pickwick papers that are almost like Dickens, in very good prose, writing down a vaudeville routine that he's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
it's a very entertaining book. Don't believe the people who who disparage it because it's not tightly plotted or something like that, or, or it's not affecting the way some of Dickens' other books are. You just have to go into it not thinking of it as... It, it's called a novel. Right. And what's a highly praised recent novel? Um, the, uh, a Gentleman in Moscow. That's called. That's a novel, too. But they're not the same genre of literary production really right a gentleman in moscow is a book that is self-contained you're meant to read it straight through and it comes out all at once right the pickwick papers came out in reg regular installments and dickens didn't know where it was going over the however long it took to come out so it's it, more like a tv show it is really much more like a written down tv show mm -hmm. than what we now get as our novels and then as some of Dickens's later novels, Great Expectations, much more self-contained. Mm -hmm. But back to the Top Hat, if we want. Yeah, yeah why not? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, Top Hat associations, lots well, of things, right? Yeah. What, what do you associate with the Top Hat? Well, the things that you mentioned, I associate, <laughs> I associate Ascot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I associate... Oh, we should mention, actually, in works such as Dickens and contemporary things, they will th say things like, he entered and removed his beaver. By which they mean top hat. Yes. Made of beaver skin. Because it is a beaver felt hat, people would just call it that. If, if you read something that says he was wearing a beaver, he, he did not have a beaver on his shoulder as, a, <laughs> as an item of, of, of apparel. He didn't have a... A beaver skin coat. No. He was wearing a top hat. A beaver hat and silk hat both refer to a top hat. Uh, they say here a top hat can also be called a high hat. Which, I, it can, but I think of that more in terms of a drum. Right. Well, did they name the drum after... Almost certainly. The hi-hat because it looked like one? Almost certainly. <laughs> but I think nowadays I think of that in terms of a drum. A cylinder hat. That's very specifically descriptive? Yes. Uh, in Russian it's called a cylinder. Really? Yes. Huh. A chimney pot hat or a stovepipe hat, which is what you think of... For a very tall top hat. Yes. You think of Abraham Lincoln wearing that. And we, we see him now. His is, he's standing, and this is a famous picture of him at Antietam. My goodness. It is a ridiculously tall hat on a ridiculously tall man. Yeah, I, I, it was what? an odd choice of his. Really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but I do think the top hat, one of the things you think is Abraham Lincoln. Yes, that's true. He's standing next to two men. One of them is wearing military clothes and he has a military hat. Yep. A very high-crowned, curved brim military hat like what you'd see a sheriff wearing today yeah yeah and the man to his right our left looking at the picture wearing a bowler is wearing a bowl a very low crown bowler yeah notably so but it looks good on him yeah but then there's abraham lincoln, lincoln in the middle went for a very very tall hat he's already taller than both of these people and then you add his hat and it adds another foot. it's a weird choice on his part i have to say top hats were very common at the time and you know what that's the thing you know what's weird about it the very tall top hat you do think of as being more of an 1830s thing. And, and here you have on, Lincoln wearing it in the 1860s. Yeah. Maybe so to, maybe he's being a little conservative. It might have been meant to be sort of conservative, kind of folksy, more than anything. Right. And we don't read it that way because Abraham Lincoln is 150 years in the past for us. But I think also Lincoln was notably... He, was, he didn't care too much about his appearance. He didn't want you to the, think he cared about his appearance. Well, I think he was a very curated appearance that was meant to seem like somebody who you could relate to because he didn't care about his appearance i don't know about that there's a there's a picture of him there's a well-known picture of him uh, from the 1840s before he was president uh where he has notably it it looks like he has almost deliberately messed his hair up <laughs> completely before taking this picture yeah yeah and i don't remember the exact quotation about the picture but it was something about how his his wife or his sister didn't care for the picture due to the disordered state of the hair it was <laughs> which is true but it read as if he was sort of surprised okay that that this was something they they cared about but he looks a little bit like a madman in this in this picture right i you know i the only reason why i'm skeptical that he didn't care about his appearance is that he did become probably the most no, definitely the most powerful president to date 
you know. Oh yes, he, he was he, he was a very astute politician. Oh that I and he understood image. So I I, I that's why I'm skeptical. But maybe he didn't care, or maybe he's been so good that he continues to trick us into thinking he didn't care. But I I mean I, I it's it's hard to find someone who doesn't care at all. But I I think especially there when some you things run that... the country, you know. <laughs> yes. Uh, but he did he did wear that very high hat yes and uh yeah the top hat is very very associated with him but yeah that's and that's one of the things that's sort of interesting is the the height of the top hat changing over time though right that's something that this this does bring up because when it first shows up it's a very short yes thing right it's a kind of like a it came out before the bowler, but it's about the height of a bowler. Well, we can go into the we we'll we'll, we'll quote the history of it. This is from right. the Conversation, which is a website. And I will I will you know give a little hint. Bo Brummel's involved, like with everything that has anything to do with men's clothing. Yes, it says here the earliest top hat is attributed to English milliner John Hetherington in a possibly apocryphal story in the St. James Gazette in January 1797. That's about when you start imagining them showing up, right? Yeah, I Based... think you imagine the tricorn going into the early 18th century. Yeah, you, you sort of I get mean, 19th this... century, I should say. In a lot of movies set in this period of time, I watch a lot of period piece dramas uh-huh. set uh, around the, the turn of the 18th century, and you definitely see, like, older folks are still wearing their tricorn, but the young hip people are wearing, you know, their little top hats, you know? yeah. And whether that's just a costumer's decision or accurate, it does seem to be what was going on. Around, yeah. And of course, some people adapted it later right. than others. And it becomes it becomes part of the naval uniform in some right, way at that right. time. And that, you know. It says, Hetherington's first public outing in the top hat caused a riot. And he was later charged for having appeared on the public highway wearing upon his head a tall structure having a shining luster and calculated to frighten timid people. The top hat gained acceptance thanks to the famous English dandy George Beau Brummel, who became its first champion. Who championed a lot of things, including the modern suit as we know it, you know? Yes, the top hat, it started off as normal street wear, city wear, Mm -hmm. wouldn't wear it into the country. No, well, and it never became really associated with the country. No, it's not country wear. You might wear it to a party at a country castle if it's 1930. Right, and it's it's the, you know, and you're already changing into your evening dress, yeah. But it's not country wear. No. And the bowler hat came in and started to be more common country wear. The hat, top hat remained for formal wear. Right. And today, where is the top hat? The dustbin of history, right? I, I don't know if it's entirely there. I think it's still there. It still exists as a choice for people who want to take a deliberately more formal step and appear even more formal. True. And if you're doing that though, you've you're probably also wearing tails, right? You've probably you're probably going whole I don't even hog, know right? About that, I will say. So you wouldn't wear a top hat with like a regular sack suit, right? That would be you'd look. It, it I would probably be strange. wouldn't. It would yeah. be strange. But here's the thing: I've I I don't remember specifically, but I think at my high school prom there were at least one of two guys who decided I'm going to wear a top hat. Right. And <laughs> I've been to to many weddings where someone and usually. Not even always the groom, mm-hmm. but at least one guy usually says, I'm going to wear a top hat and wears who, a top hat. To the who wedding. wears a top hat to a wedding that's not yours? Well, in 1910, everybody. Well, yeah, no, but I mean but now, right? That's sort of, if you're out not, dressing you, the groom, you, you should, well, a, that's they, a faux pas. I'm going to just, I don't, I don't get. <laughs> I think sometimes you have to accept that times change. Yeah. And I think in these days, unless you know that the groom is going to be wearing a top hat, yeah. you you probably don't want to outdress. <laughs> now that said, I got I went to a wedding last year. I got the invitation and it said formal attire. Well, this is this this could be a whole thing on its own and plenty of people could, have covered yeah. this topic. But yeah, that it it's very confusing because it doesn't mean what it used to mean. They don't mean show up in tails and a top hat. They easily could have. And some people if they wanted you to show up in tails and a top hat, what would they write? They don't write They'd say Please white tie. Wear, well, yeah, I guess they, they would wear, say white tie. Yeah. You'd say black tie if you want people to wear tuxedos. And yeah. they'd say formal, typically just formal attire if they want you to wear a suit. You're right. That's, 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 that's kind of the invitation lingo as it exists. All right. Today. All right. Yeah. I'm, I have to get with the times. Yeah. You will see people showing up in top hats when they want to dress up they're already dressed up. Right. For And, and usually it's somewhat egotistical people these days yeah yeah uh it's it's sort of i as much as i love hats and as much as i love the top hat 
Um, unless I was going to a bunch of like embassy functions, uh, where I was going to be meeting with heads of state who are extremely f have extremely formal, you know, rituals. I, I probably wouldn't have much use for it. Weddings, you know, very formal weddings. There are still ones that go on where you would wear white tie and then would be expected yeah. to wear a top hat. And you're going is, to Ascot if you're going uh, to, yeah. That is another association, actually, is that uh, diplomats traditionally would always wear a top hat. Right. And many of them still do in specific settings, right? Yes. Diplomatic functions sometimes still have yeah. people wearing top Here's hats. Here's a picture of Winston Churchill with a frock coat and a gray top hat. Oh. He's looking very good. He Churchill, looks great. Churchill, Churchill, unlike Lincoln, was always a good dresser. Yes, he knew what he was doing, and he wanted you to know it. And he looks good in this top hat. And Well, that's the thing. Everyone looks good in a top hat. It does, I, yeah. I want it to come back, right? I, 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 I can't. Everyone looks good in this Churchill-style top hat. I think the... The, the <laughs> okay. two foot high Lincoln style top hat. Right. Oh, you know who else wore a top hat like that? And this is why I associate it more with the 1830s and 40s. Isambard Kingdom Brunel. You, go ahead, pull him up. He is one of the coolest figures in history. He invented such things as the propeller and sewers as we know them. Oh. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I've seen his picture. He's wearing a very high top hat and he's standing in front of some very large chains. Yes, he was, he was the, the hero of Victorian civil engineering. Oh, wait, no, he didn't do sewers. I'm sorry, Joseph Bazalgett was the sewers. But Isambard Kingdom Brunel did a lot of uh, amazing things. And, and he wears the top hat well, even though it's extremely tall. It looks, it looks, looks good on him. Yeah. Uh, a lot of railways, yeah. a lot of... Uh, you know, he's, he's what you, when you imagine Victorian middle-class man made good through science and education, this is this, what you think. This guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he, yeah, he, he, he pulls off the top hat and, it, and he has the look. Uh, and it is one of those very high hats. He was also incredibly short, so uh -huh. that was that was part of Probably it. Probably part of it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you will see them at weddings. You will see them at at dinners. Right. If you are going to something that is white tie, it's still, you should wear one. Right. If you're going to the, the Al Smith dinner I saw on television during the, the presidential campaign, mm -hmm. it was a white tie event. People would have come in in top, top hats, I think. Yeah. Uh, Although, if let's say you, you, I mean, if you were putting together your white tie budget... I wouldn't spend it all on the top hat since you don't wear it into the function. Right. right? No. Yeah. It's, you know, I would I would get one, but don't you know I would focus more on your tails and your white tie. Yeah. And of course, if, as you if you've heard the whole song that our program begins with, yeah, it is called top hat, white tie, and tails. That yes. is the the combination with black tie. What hat do you, what hat would you say is right to wear with black tie? <sighs> Probably a Hamburg. Right, if you, you know, if, probably. I, I, probably a lot of people don't wear a hat with it, but if you're gonna wear a hat, I would, I would go with the Hamburg. It's formal enough, but also not not too formal because you formal. could wear that with a sack suit too. Right, top hat with a sack suit is a little, it's just a little odd. Now that said, it didn't used to be so formal. It was just your normal business wear. Right, but there is a, a thing that tends to happen where the day to day things of one era and a further era become the Filter formal. All. Yeah, yeah. So. Basketball shorts in 30 years will be formal wear. Potentially. Uh, I don't, I don't we, know about we, we, that. We'll, right? we'll see. I mean, we've, we've kind of reached a, I don't know, kind of a calcification of, yeah, it's of true. men's clothes. Um, mainly because people are still hesitant to allow synthetic materials into formal wear. Or synthetic materials that aren't pretending to be natural materials. Right. Um, so we'll see. Now, this article had, for instance, and... Uh, just for an example, we didn't we're get very far in the history. Back. We got we got to where it came from. Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah, um, but it had a, a, an image of uh, T Pain wearing a, uh, a a checkered top hat. Here he is. Oh yeah, and he's wearing it with a t shirt. Honestly, yeah, I thought I wouldn't like it. It doesn't look I don't bad. Know it's striped. Yeah, it doesn't look bad. If you if if that's if that's the style you can pull off, go ahead and do it. Yeah, wear your top hat. Yeah, uh, so. I think people use it as an element of personal flair now, not apart right. from a a code of dress. Right. And wearing a top hat is a little cooler. If you wanted to wear something from the previous era's formal wear, wearing tails makes you look more like a circus ringmaster, whereas a top hat is sort of cool. You know? Yeah. Now, I knew a guy in college who just wore one every day. G given that we went to the same college, who did I know the same person? Oh, I guess we don't have to name names on our very... I'll cut it out of the show. Oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Do you remember that? I do, yeah. So he 
required the nickname Top Hat for wearing the Top Hat. Required or acquired? I, yeah, I heard required. Acquired. Okay. My, um, you can call me Top Hat. That's that's Top yeah. Hat to you? Uh. <laughs> that would be even worse. <laughs> but I think that he he was... Uh, well, what, what words would you use to describe the impression created by this? I guess in college it's not as weird, right? It was pretty weird. It was it was pretty... I guess it was pretty weird, yeah. It's okay, though, right? Yeah, you, everyone's got to have, have their right, thing. I, yeah. made, I made some really questionable fashion decisions in college. I wore all corduroy. I wore corduroy vests, corduroy pants, corduroy jackets, all at the same time. It didn't look good. Did you ever have a corduroy tie? Yeah. I have one. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know, and I love corduroy pants. Corduroy pants are cool. And a corduroy jacket's fine. Yeah. Don't wear them all there, at the there same is time. a reason why corduroy is on its own refers to pants. Yes. But I still do have a corduroy hat yeah. or two that I like. Just to sum up my style in college, a friend of mine, a friend of ours, actually, I won't say who it is, um, at one point said, you come across as somebody who once heard about what it is like to dress well. Which I thought was the, it was the most cutting insult oh, I had ever received cutting. until that time, and you know it did it did uh, it inspired me to do a little more research and try a little harder. I'll bleep this out too. Who was that? <laughs> All right, now I want you to picture, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to describe the the dress sense of this person, uh, as opposed to imagine someone instead of wearing corduroy everything, wore uh, the theme was stained everything. <laughs> Now, now we're getting a little too much into personal history. <laughs> oh, that's true. But back, back, back to the top hat. I imagine yeah. we'll bleep out the names. In yeah, there. of course, uh, of course, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> my brother wore a top hat regularly. Okay. When uh, we were in high school. He also wore a bow tie, right? Yes. And that, they were related. Uh, when we were in high school, he... Uh, well, actually, no, this was, would have been my first year of college and his last year of high school. Okay. He wore a top hat... And a bow tie and a frock coat. Well, I guess and he, he, he went all in, right? And he grew a beard and he was running for president of the high school under the slogan, Honest John Berman. Well, see, that's true commitment yeah. to a bit yes. right there. Uh, yes. So I, I thought that was great. That was, that was true commitment to a bit. There's nothing to stop you. There's no reason not to do that. No, I could do that. I could show up to work in a bow tie, top hat, and frock coat, and they wouldn't fire me. No. Uh, yeah. People might say, oh, Carl's been weird again. But that, that'd that be the extent of it. No, I imagine that is not against the dress code. The dress code anywhere does not normally exist to enforce your dressing more casually. Well, I guess if you worked at like a pool, if you were a lifeguard. <laughs> yeah, too, can you imagine Wait. someone <laughs> dressing in top hat, white tie, and tails to be a lifeguard? <laughs> hey, Brad, don't you think that's going to make it tough for you to, I don't know, dive in and save someone? I don't intend to. <laughs> <laughs> so that would, that yeah. would cause a problem. So other associations with top hats, we do have magicians. Yeah. I guess that just came from you would dress formally when putting on a show yes, around exactly. the turn of the century, no matter what you were doing. And then the people who were caricatured were magicians. Yes, and they also have a famous trick pulling a rabbit out of a top hat. That's true. Um, and you, they, you cannot do that trick unless you have a top hat. It's, and very few other hats have room for a rabbit. It's not terribly impressive because... If you were to think of all the things you could fit a rabbit in, a top hat is one of them. Yes. It's a big hat. I'd be more impressed if you took a rabbit out of a flat cap or a baseball cap or... That would be more manifestly impossible. A visor. Yeah. I want to see that. There's no hat, but right. a rabbit's in it. And, you know, Dickens does keep does mention people putting letters inside their hats. I think a lot of people put letters yeah. in their hats. It, imagine how lucky you were as a Victorian gentleman. You had so many places to put just about any object of any size. You had so many, you had vests, you had coats, you had shirts, you had your hat, you had your pants. But also, you had a it, bag. If it were, what if it were today's weather? Oh, you'd be very warm. You would be very warm. That's the trouble with, with it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, although not today's weather. I mean, that's the thing. A lot of... Well, I'm talking about the weather today when it's in the 80s. Oh, yeah. Well, but a lot of clothing of yesteryear had... Um, it would have been lighter weight, right? Yeah. You know, you, you had two suits. You had your summer suit and your winter suit, and probably a spring and fall suit in right, between, yeah. right? And I assume you had different weight hats. I, mm -hmm. I can't be certain, but you probably did. Well, but people yeah. would have white hats. and Yeah. You know. 
You also associate the top hat with a, a famous apocryphal story, which people often quote as the reason people stopped wearing hats. Oh, yeah. Which we should address now, if ever. Right. Which is Kennedy, right? Yeah. People yeah. say that John F. Kennedy, people say that John F. Kennedy did not wear a hat to his inauguration as U.S. president. It's not true. And therefore, people stopped wearing hats. It's not true. Not true. First of all, people do still wear hats. I wear a hat. There, many people wear hats. They're just not as de rigueur as they were in the past. Just to, just to point out how not true this is, John F. Kennedy not only wore a top hat to his inauguration, he wasn't even the last president to wear a top hat to his inauguration. Who was the last one to wear a top hat? Reagan. Oh, that's right. His first one. His second one, he didn't. Yeah. But he wore, yeah. Uh, Well, everything is wrong about the story. (laughs) Not only was he not the last president to wear a top hat to his inauguration, he was, he came after the first president who eschewed the top hat at his inauguration, who was Dwight Eisenhower, (laughs) who was famously bald. Yeah. (laughs) So he... If anyone had a reason to wear a hat, it was him. Right. Just just to prevent sunburn. Yes. So Eisenhower, but Eisenhower was, first of all, he was a decorated general, so and you couldn't be rude to the guy. Right. He could do whatever he wanted. He just saved Europe. Yeah. <laughs> and he was not a very formal kind of guy. Mm-mm. He famously got along terribly with Nixon, who was very buttoned up and informal, and, and that was why, you know. And where's John F. Kennedy? is known specifically for being stylish and kind of a clothes horse. Yes. Right? He liked yeah. wearing different styles at different occasions. He's, I mean, he's known for his informal wear because he wore what was appropriate for informal wear in the 60s. Yeah. But he also dressed very formally in formal he occasions. He dressed to the occasion. He was a good dresser. Yeah. And it, his clothes suited the moment. Mm-hmm. And he wore a top hat. The thing that made it, honestly... Probably made it very inconvenient to wear top hats. And why bowlers and fedoras and things came in afterwards. Cars? Cars. Yeah. Have you ever tried getting in a car even wearing even wearing a baseball cap? It bumps on things. Yeah. Now, uh, Kennedy at his inauguration was driving in an open-topped car. Which right. didn't cause any problems. That Not caused that problems for him later. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but, but after that, speaking of that, Lyndon Johnson became president. Yep. Uh... Under circumstances, I'm sure he didn't wish for. No, he had nothing to do with it. Uh, but when it happened, he did not wear a hat. Lyndon Johnson, I don't think, is particularly known for his clothes. No. If you do picture him wearing a hat, and I don't know if he wore them, you picture him wearing a big cowboy hat. Probably. I mean, he may never have worn one, but I think he could have worn you one. You think of him as a very rough, plain-spoken cowboy type of guy. Yeah. Now, you th- he also he's very, also very, very brilliant. Well, he, oh. Yeah, <laughs> and, and he he wasn't playing into this stupid stupid stereotype, you know. No, no, no. Not at all. He... he uh, I don't agree with him on some things. I think everyone... A lot of people disagree with things like, oh, Vietnam War. Um, well, yeah, but, I don't think you'll find anyone who agrees with <laughs> Lyndon Johnson on right. every single thing. We, 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 but, we, don't, we don't express an official Hatcast opinion. The Hatcast has no opinions on anything. Um, not well, we've, we've given them all, all this program. but Well, go, go ahead. Uh, uh, I don't even know where I was going with that. But yeah, I, I imagine he wouldn't have worn a top hat, and he didn't. He didn't, no. Yeah. And then Reagan brought it back. Right. How many presidents later? Well, it was... Johnson, Johnson, Nixon, Nixon, Ford, Ford. Oh, Ford might have worn one. I don't know. If I don't he even wore know. One. Yeah, and Reagan wore one. Oh, yeah, but yeah, and Reagan wore Reagan wore the tails and the striped pants and all of the normal the right inauguration gear that was associated from like 1900 until 1980. You know? Right, and then why did he? Why do you think he gave that up for his second inauguration? Mm. Maybe people mocked him. Probably not. I mean, he was theatrical. He, he was an actor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, we should check. I don't know if he re- if he did give it up for the second one or not. But um, well, we can look it up. Yeah. yeah. Facts are not important on uh, on this program. Uh, this is more about how we feel about hats. Yeah. Uh, as has been said. As yeah. has been said. They're also the top hats also associated with the Mad Hatter. Right. But you'll often see the top hat if you're seeing them sold. You'll see a Mad Hatter model. Right, which is that it's that very specific eighteen somethings uh flared top hat. Yeah. Right. And my brother's was edging towards that really more than more than Lincoln's. Lincoln's, okay. yeah. But and it's it's it was still a good looking hat. It's a good looking hat. It's hard to wear with anything other than a frock coat though, right? right it, does, yeah. it doesn't look right 
because I mean the last top hat that was popular was the shorter, very boxy silk top hat right of formal wear and that's the one that's kind of calcified as top as hat the top hat yeah. yeah uh so you wear it if you're re- if you're intentionally dressing in the style of the right. 1880s or something like that yeah. or, or earlier the collapsing top hat how do they work they're oh you've never seen one of these no i've never actually seen well, one. my friend owns one my friend doug owns one yeah oh. they have a hinge on the sides and it's silk sides and the hinges inside the silk you press down the top and it collapses. Huh. Doesn't it wrinkle? Well, it's very thin silk. So it stretches. It stretches. It's taut. Okay. Uh, and these were invented. You know why they were invented? Uh, I don't have to get For the that. opera house. Oh, really? For very large opera houses where they, there wouldn't be room in the cloakroom for everyone's hat. Right. If you were going to bring the hat in with you. Now you're in the opera house. And I'm sure as a hat wearer, you've had the problem of going into... A theater and not knowing where to put your hat. Because there's not a hat check anymore. The hat collapses and can be easily slid under your seat. Wouldn't you look at that? That is the, the point of that. Because so a great wear, invention, yeah. Yeah, because you definitely can't wear... <laughs> one, you shouldn't wear your hat inside. Two, you shouldn't wear it at a theater. Certainly, especially a top hat. Certainly not if it's a top hat but because... Baseball cap, flat cap, fine... Go for it. Uh, but if, yeah, don't wear your top hat to the theater. If any hat is going to disturb your fellow patrons, yeah. it is a Abraham Lincoln-style stovepipe top hat. Do you know, this reminds me, though, the only place where I've recently seen a top hat in the wild is when I go to the opera. There's, like, one guy who shows up in full, like, white tie from Good time for to time him. to go to the opera. Yeah, and he's got he's got the top hat, and he takes it off uh, when he goes inside. But you see him outside and inside holding it. Um, yeah, he's got a, Good he's, for got, him. he's got a, a tightly cropped white beard. He looks very, very 1889. Like, but he's dressed correctly for the opera. Good for him. Good. I can't say that I do that when I go to the opera. No, I mean, I, I, I put on a jacket and tie. Yes. And so do I. And I try know. and I do wear a hat I, and I know. try to dress well. I'm not formal. I'm, I'm business casual, really, you know, but, but... one tries to not dress sl- in a slovenly manner in order to respect the music. Right. It took a lot of effort to put that show on. And I, so. you know, I try not to be judgmental. You know, and even, even at the, even at the, yeah, I'm, you try not to be judgmental. I'm not even, I'm not even going to try. Uh, <laughs> when you go to the, like, so, okay, I get here in our somewhat provincial hometown, right? Right. Where we are lucky enough to have an opera. I'm happy that people are going. I don't care if you wear a t-shirt. Oh, yes. I'm just glad that there are people in the seats. Where I get a little bit annoyed is when I go to New York City to the Met, and there are people who aren't even trying. And these are like not cheap tickets. And these are this is a, a major metropolitan and... area with people who know, who go to the opera regularly, and there are people in t-shirts. Even you'll find, I think sometimes, even in Binghamton, people dress a little bit better because it's kind of a novelty and it's a thing to do than when you go. Because no one's going to stop them. No one's going to say, "I'm sorry, you're wearing a t-shirt. Go away." Right. Ah, oh, but it's a shame, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I was going to say, when I I was annoyed because, and I like Nehru jackets, but I went to the symphony and the conductor was wearing a Nehru jacket. That's his choice. I mean... Oh, well, it was. I, I mean, I don't assume somebody else put it on him, but... <laughs> You're going to wear this. No. I don't know. I think the, the white tie or black tie from the conductor is, shows some respect for the music and the occasion. You're the conductor. You're not just going. Does the conductor, when he leaves, put on his top hat? I don't know. I, yeah. I, it probably depends on the conductor. Yeah. Um, but apparently there was a lot of debate in the Soviet Union as, shortly after the revolution oh, what whether <laughs> they would wear the traditional diplomatic top hat. Right. Why did they decide? I don't think they did. I'm not sure. I just read it's kind of the around it. symbol of the international capitalist. It is, it, it is that as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, we didn't really bring that up. But yeah, if we're talking about the Soviets, it was kind of the in propaganda. Your enemy is wearing a top hat. I, I, now, we've been, we've been a little opinionated and we're going to get more opinionated in a moment. I, I want to reiterate, if you have any views that you want to express, if you want to disagree with us, we welcome it. We welcome an open exchange of information and ideas on Hatcast. Oh, absolutely! You can email hatcast at yandex dot com. Oh yeah, we didn't we didn't really give the uh, contact information. Not yet. We yet. just gave it. Yeah. Before we go now, I'll, I'll mention another sighting I had of a top hat in the wild. 
And this was a man that I know who used to wear a top hat with goggles on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a top hat with goggles? That sounds like steampunk. Yes, I think that, without it being said in so many words, I think that's what it was. Ugh. Steampunk, it's a thing. Yes. I like classic clothing for the sake of classic clothing, yes. not for costume. I, now, of course, if I'm in a play, I'll wear a costume. And if I'm playing, you know, some Jules Verne hero in a uh, play, um, yeah, I guess I'd yeah. wear but, some. But I would wear a bowler hat just for the sake of it. I don't yeah. actually have a top hat, but no, I, I would wear that. it at an appropriate occasion, yeah. perhaps. Um, but steampunk, what would you say it is even doing? I don't, I saw that goggles on a hat, and I said, "What is even the? What is that even supposed to be? A a hat cannot see. The idea is that you're keeping your goggles on your hat, and then you'll put them on. But it's ridiculous because you wouldn't be wearing a top hat if you were in a goggle situation. You'd be wearing some kind of flight cap, or you if, know, if a hat at all. And even if you it's were just wearing mashing a top hat, things together even, and yeah, thinking that it's. Cool. Without it making sense. Yeah. And even if you were, for some reason, wearing goggles and a top hat, even if there were some reason that that made sense... You wouldn't put them on your top hat because it would even scratch the were... silk or the beaver. Yes. And he... So this... So even even if you didn't care about that... Are they opera goggles? No. They no. were welder goggles <laughs> yeah. of some kind. So uh, even you're if right you were you... doing that... <laughs> you did say we're about to get very judgmental, and you were right. <laughs> I wouldn't say that and lie. <laughs> so, but even if you were doing that and you were wearing goggles and wearing your top hat, if you then said, "All right, my goggle wearing task is completed. I now need to see as normal," and you lifted the goggles and picked them up, you wouldn't pick, take off the hat, remove the goggles band from around the back of your head, put the hat back on, and then put the goggles and band around the cylinder of your hat. No, you'd slip them up onto your forehead like you do your reading glasses when you have to see something at a distance. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know what this is supposed to betoken. It's to evoke a feeling of adventure and anachronism. Uh, it, it's... Uh, I don't know. I There was a time in high school where I was really into, like, people who decorated their computers in very, like, specific Victorian ways to sort of, like, celebrate technology. Uh -huh. I thought that was kind of cool. And then I looked at the rest of the community, and I was just like, oh, no, you're just ruining things. But we're, now we're alienating people who might like our show. So I'm not going to I'm not gonna attack a thing that you like. If you like it, it's retro. No, I mean, there's Defend probably it, a small you know? segment of the population that likes hats, and that probably includes the goggle hat people. And so if I've, if I've upset you, I apologize. It's fine. It's, I guess it's fine. But, I, but I'm not doing this to upset you. I'm doing this to give my own view. And if you would like to give yours and... And air it in a let a let a thousand flowers bloom. Email hatcast at yandex dot com. I think we should leave it there. Yes. Otherwise, it might get. We didn't need to go down that rabbit hole. No, just, not stick at with all. Lewis yeah, Carroll yeah. references. Yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> I I I think just speaking of adventure, if H. Ryder Haggard were a member of today, rather than a me we're, we're living today rather than living in the actual nineteenth century, he might have been a steampunk person. Maybe. But back to Isambard Kingdom Brunel, right? If you think about the idea of steampunk, right? Yeah. It's sort of like adventuring inventors. He was that. He made the world's fastest and biggest ship. Do you know what he wore when he got on his ship? Regular clothes and a top hat. You know, yeah, he, he didn't was, have like a funny costume. That was his street clothes yeah. at that time, yeah. No, he didn't wear a funny costume. Yeah, so that's that's that. If I think of the typical 19th century adventurer, I think of Richard Francis Burton. But I, right. yeah, well, I, I don't what, know what, what kind of hat he wore. I assume sometimes... Uh, well, well, here he is dressed <laughs> to explore, uh, and he's wearing a, a very large turban. And here's wearing uh, just a big, uh, floppy sort of sun hat. You no, know? this is the actor Richard Burton that oh. came up when we looked for his picture. <laughs> Whoops. They look remarkably similar. Here he is wearing a sort of a... Ooh, okay, so he... He was into smoking hat, I think you would call this. Yeah. He was he was such an explorer that he when he when he's seen wearing a hat, it is a 
And he has to wear whatever out. hat was appropriate for the place where he was exploring, right? Yes. Yeah, so I imagine if he were walking down the street in 19th century London, he would, have he would wear hat. the correct hat for that circumstance. Yeah. Well. Let's rate the top hat. It's a good hat. Yes. So, yeah, here's... This is going to be an interesting rating, okay? Style-wise, it's almost perfect. I'm going to... I mean... Although narrow, really, because you can't wear it and be stylish and all of it. Well, that's where the practicality thing comes in, right? All right. So, so style, I'll give it It's going to get a yeah. middle-of-the-road overall score from me. Yeah. But, I mean, you're wearing the refined end-of-the-19th, early-20th century top hat, right? Yes. Silk. It looks good. It, you look the way that you are intending to look, which is well-dressed. Yes. Maybe you're poor, but you don't look poor, right? right. It's sort of a... You're you're doing style right. I'm going to give it a nine. All yeah. right, I'll give it an eight. Nine and an eight. And then practicality. It's useless. There is nothing I don't own one. There's no reason this. to own one. <laughs> Are you going to a very specific event? Yes, maybe. It gets a three. I'll agree with you. Three. Um, Beautiful, but useless. Yeah, 5.75. Yeah. All right, well, that's the top hat. Yeah. Hope you liked it. If not, I hope you find something you do like. Yeah, you could let us know, but what's the point? No, no, there's there's a point. We'll read your letter on the air, and you'll in- involve yourself in an exchange of thoughts but with not, other human beings. Are we going to change? If you're trying to change us, don't contact us. If you just want to express your thoughts, by all means. Change is the only constant in the universe, Carl. I've, I'm different than I was before we began this program. That's true, and I guess I'm different too. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. I am putting on my top hat, tying up my white tie, brushing off my tail. Putting up my shirt, putting in my shirt, start polishing my nails. He's stepping out of here to breathe an atmosphere.